Hello my friends, this is Logan Jacob. Today I want to take you through a tutorial to show you how to set up the Cordial preset in Mosaic and how to use that to create chords um, from just a single note and also to be able to set them up to play in key. So I'm going to walk you through exactly what I did to create the video that you just heard. So as you can see here, we're pretty much starting from scratch. I've just got my voice is currently in channel one, and then I've got a mix bus, which I always like to do. I'm going to add some mastering effects onto that in a minute. So I want to take you through the setup of exactly what I did. So starting off, we're going to create a new audio and I'm going to drag it over to the left. And this is going to be our piano sound. You can obviously use whatever synth voice you want. I love the Ravenscroft 275 piano sounds. So I'm going to set that there. And then I'm going to create a MIDI channel to throw in immediately to the right of it. And that's where I'm going to have everything controlling. I'm not actually going to be playing the Ravenscroft directly. I'm going to let uh, AUM play that for me, which makes things a little bit easier. So first off, um, I do like to turn on the equalizer bring the high down a little bit, the mids and lows up. That's just kind of a personal setting. I also like to bring the velocity amount down so that it'll play everything just a little bit louder. And Ravenscroft has a pretty solid uh, reverb, which is okay. I also like to go ahead and throw in a Bleece reverb. If you are familiar with my videos, you know that I'm a fan of the Bleece reverb. Um, and I'm just going to pull the length of the reverb down to about 1.8 seconds and the dry wet down to about 40%. Let's see how that sounds. Yeah, that's nice. That's a nice little reverb for what we're going to be doing. Adds a little bit of spaciness to it. So next up, we need to set up our MIDI units, how we want them. So uh, I am going to have everything sequenced from Rosetta cells. So I'm going to start that at the very top of the chain. And then I'm gonna have cells going into Mosaic, which is gonna be playing our chords. And then I'll add the other two in as we get a little bit further down. We'll just get rid of that little empty slot for now. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is get our preset into Mosaic. Now, if you go to patchstorage.com and go under the mosaic section you'll find a preset called cordial and if you don't know how to do that if you don't know how to get it loaded in um, we'll, we'll do that later on I'm assuming that you know how to do that so cordial sets up this lovely little preset which has a bunch of options so basically what this does is that when it receives a note it's going to play a chord based on that note as the root so if I send the piano the keyboard into that from AUM. If I play a C, <laughs> first I have to tell, there we go, I have to tell Ravenscroft to receive from Cordial, that helps. So now when I play a C, you get a C major seventh chord in this case, because I do have the seventh turned on. I'm gonna turn that off for now. So there's a nice seventh chord, or a nice C chord, a nice G major. Now, if you have a keen ear, what you may be noticing is that it's playing all of them as major chords. And that's because of this setting knob here, this quality knob. So you can set it however you want it. You can do major, minor, sus2, I uh, believe sus4 is next. And uh, that's it. So major, minor, sus2, and sus4. That's a pretty chord. I love sus2 chords. And then the sus4 chord. Now you can also change the voicing to be a closed voicing or an open voicing. I'll take you through all those settings. So uh, drop two. So it starts closed and then it goes drop two, drop three, spread. And you can hear what those sound like. So that's closed. That's the drop two voicing, the drop three voicing, and then the spread voicing. And in addition to that, you can also change the inversion. 
So we'll start, I'm gonna move to a G major chord. So that's in first inversion, or in a root position. And then we go to first inversion, which puts the third of the chord at the bottom. And then we go to second inversion, which puts the fifth of the chord at the bottom. And then we have a third inversion. If we were using a seven chord, it would put the seventh of the chord at the bottom. And you may have noticed while I was turning that knob that this matrix over here was moving too, because by default, this matrix is set up to control the voicing and the inversion. So I can play a chord. And while I'm holding it, I can change it. I just want to change I can hit it once and then move it and that way it sounds a little bit different every time you can also set this kind of MIDI drone so that it'll keep holding the chord for you as if it were a uh, it had a sustain pedal on it physically holding the, the note that's doing it itself. And that works better with a synth or a, a pad or something that's going to sustain for you. And one of the coolest features, I think, in this is this strum feature. So you can actually tell it to uh, do kind of a rake or a strum as if you were strumming a guitar. So instead of playing all the notes at the same time, it's going to strum through them, which I think is really good. It's, it's programmed really nicely to sound like a person actually doing it. If you really crank up the, the uh, milliseconds on there, the strum length, it makes it a little bit more random. I like to have it around 200 or so. And it just kind of sounds like a nice little rake. Now the issue here is that it's playing only major chords. So if I wanted to actually play in a key, I would have to constantly be shifting that between major and minor chords. So what I want is for AUM to play everything in the right key for me automatically. So that's where my next MIDI plugin comes in. I'm going to add in uh, Rosetta Scalar. And I'm going to tell Cordial or Mosaic to go into Scalar. And then I'm going to have Scalar go into the Ravenscroft. Now, for this uh, demo, I'm going to have everything in C minor. So now what's going to happen is that no matter what notes Cordial sends out, it's going to automatically transpose everything to C minor for me. So whereas before, if I played a G, it would play a G major chord. Now it's going to play a G minor chord. Now, when it quantizes up, sometimes the notes don't go in the right direction. So I like to set it to quantize down, and we actually get the correct chords. So now we have our C minor chord, D diminished, E flat major, F minor, G minor, A flat major, and B flat major chords as they're supposed to be. Okay. So now I need to automate that. I want to tell, I want to have uh, AUM play through a chord progression for me. And I actually like to have AUM decide what, um, what chords it's going to be playing when. So I'm going to use cells for that, which is a nice little sequencer. Um, it's not perfect, but it has uses and it works in this case very well. So let's set that to my keyboard. And I am going to tell Mosaic to receive a signal from cells so that when I play something in cells, it'll automatically go through Mosaic and then through the scaler and then into the Ravenscroft. So I want my chords to strum uh, every bar, once per bar. And I'm going to set the gate to 100%. So I've got my keyboard selected in Rosetta Cells. I'm going to hit record. And now this just is going to plug in whatever note I play into the cell. So I'm going to just go up a C natural minor scale. So C, E, flat, F, G, E flat, E flat, and C. So if I just played that, it would just go straight through the progression one bar at a time. Now 
Oh, no, that's kind of boring. That's not a great chord progression. If you know anything about music theory, you know that we don't want that kind of progression most of the time. I am going to step away from traditional theory rules, though, and I'm going to set it to random so that it randomly bounces around between the chords. So now when I play it, Cells is going to randomly pick a note to start with, a root note to start with, and then, of course, Mosaic is going to play the chord from there for me. Now, that's pretty close to the sound that I had coming out of the piano in uh, the little demo that we started with. But there's one more thing that I want to do. I want to automate this stuff. Now, I could sit here and do it myself if I wanted to. Change the voicing from chord to chord. But I would much rather have that automated. Now, setting the gate at 100% means that it's sustaining the chord so that when I so when I move to a different inversion, it restrums the chord in that inversion in that voicing. Sometimes that's cool, sometimes it's not. So we'll we'll play around with that a little bit to get the sound we want. So to automate the voicing and the inversion, I'm going to add in an LFO because we love LFOs. So Rosetta LFO, uh, I love it. It's simple. I know there's some other LFO apps out there that are great, but Rosetta is a, 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 I'm a big fan of the Rosetta LFO. So to tell the LFO to control Mosaic, I'm going to go into, uh, I'm actually going to have Rosetta control all of my MIDI controls. So we'll set Rosetta LFO to go into the MIDI control. And then I'm going to go into here under MIDI control, and I'm going to find Mosaic, which is in the MIDI channel 2, and there it is. Now, if you notice, none of the knobs are labeled. That's kind of a side effect of using Mosaic. So you have to kind of know which knob goes where. It's actually pretty simple. The top left knob is always 0. And then it goes from there, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, so if I go here, and I'm going to go ahead and play the chord progression behind me so that you can actually see the LFO being active. So going to Mosaic, so voicing is going to be knob number one. So set that to channel one, and I know that the top LFO in Rosetta is CC13. So now you can kind of see in here that that starts going bananas. And then I'm going to set this one to CC15, which is the second LFO. Now that may be the sound you're going for in your music, but that's not the sound that I'm going for in my music. So I'm going to slow down this LFO so that it makes a little bit more sense. I'm actually going to do a couple of things. First thing I'm going to do is slow it down. So it's changing much more gradually. I also don't necessarily like it to be a sine wave for this. I like it to be a little more random. So I'm going to do a sample and hold on both of those. So now as it changes, we'll get a new voicing. And if that change happens in the middle of a chord, then it's going to restrum that chord. I might have slowed that down just a little too much. Let's go to 0.10.07. So sometimes I actually like it to restrum the chord when the voicing changes. I think it adds a little bit of character to it. Sounds almost like a real pianist sitting down and playing through the chords. So that's pretty much all I did for the uh, keyboard channel for the piano channel there. I'll go ahead and add the other ones in just for those of you that might be interested in that. So the next thing I like to put in is my bass. And in this case, I used uh, Magellan 2, which is a fairly new app from uh, Yonak. I think that's how you say it. And I have this on the thumb sign preset, which is a nice little pad. And what I actually did, I adjusted this preset a little bit. So I uh, set a minus three octave for the low oscillator and put it on a sign. So it's kind of acting like a sub. And that adds.
adds in a, just a little bit of bass goodness to it. Other than that, I'm going to leave that pretty much as it was. Uh, I am going to throw some reverb on there because I can't help it. <laughs> For the pad, we can go a little higher. And I'm going to have uh, cells control that. I know that the notes are going to be in key because I set up the correct scale there. Um, now, if you are going to be changing and transposing as you go along, you might want to have it come from Scalar or something. Um, that takes a little bit of manipulation to get just the root note to go over there. We'll worry about that um, on another day. So for now, I'm going to have cells send just the root note in there as our bass. And let's see how that sounds. <laughs> And then finally, our drums. Now, you may have noticed on the demo that I did have an arpeggio channel next to the bass. I didn't actually use it. I was thinking about having an arpeggiated bass line, but it didn't really fit the character that I was going for. So now we're going to add a nice little drum beat to it. I'm going to use Ruse Maker, first drum machine I got for iPad. And I'm going to have uh, Rosetta Rhythm control that. So there's Rosetta Rhythm. And I'm gonna, I have to solo my mic too if I'm going to solo that so that you can actually hear me talking. And um, I just tend to generate drum beats. I don't like to mess with the Euclidean thing too much. So we're going to generate a drum beat. And then uh, a lot of times I'll just kind of listen to it, see if I like it. In that case, I don't. That's really lame. That's pretty close to what I want. I do want kind of a simple... And we're actually going to shift that over. I guess my, my love of hip-hop has uh, taught me that I really like just having the snare on beats two and four. Um, we can mutate that a little bit, and we're actually going to do less beats from the open hi-hat. And I do want to add in some closed hi-hat. Okay, sorry about that. I'm in my office at work. I teach at a university, and I had a, a student knock on my door. <laughs> it is officially my office hour, so I have to actually answer the door. But we're back. So I've got this little drum groove going. I like it well enough. Um, I'm going to change what preset I'm in. I like the uh, synth jazz kit, except that I don't like that sound. So I'm going to change that one to just a normal closed hi-hat. Yeah. Bring up the bass drum a little bit. Cool. And then uh, I'll go ahead and throw in some reverb. Maybe not that much reverb. Cool. So let's hear all that together.
So there it is. Now, I'm going to do one more thing, and uh, pardon the pun, but I'm going to add just one more little final touch to it. So I'm going to mix everything over to the mix bus, which I probably should have done earlier, but that's okay. So that I can run everything through effectively a master channel. So that's what mix bus A is. Now I'm going to add, I use this mastering program called Final Touch. So you have to have it open because it's going through Interapp Audio and it won't load uh, correctly if you don't already have it open. So we're going to add Interapp Audio and Final Touch. And it loads up there and you can already hear the change in my voice. And I'm going to use the preset um, Electro Basic. I don't mess with it too much. I am going to put a little bit of reverb in there. Some small room reverb just on the overall mix. Now, I am not a mastering engineer by any means. I know some of you out there are much better at that than I am, and you're probably yelling through your computer right now that I've done something really stupid and ruined the sound. But I like it. It works for my ears, and that's pretty much what I use on all of my videos, mastering things down. And then I just record that channel and hit record to play it to be able to get the track mixed. So now that that's all in there, I'm going to start it from the beginning and just let it jam on that. And that is it. I do want to take a moment and shout out uh, Daniel Socha, who found my Facebook page, uh, commented on one of my videos, and we had a little conversation about Mosaic, and he told me about using the Cordial preset on Mosaic and running an LFO through Rosetta through it. So he was definitely the inspiration for this. Um, it doesn't look like there's a lot of information about Cordial out there. It's a fairly new preset. I think it's been on patch storage for a little over a week now. Um, so I wanted to get that out there to kind of show you how to get that set up. But a big shout out to Daniel for introducing me to that. And also for the developer of Cordial, the guy that actually created the preset, um, he posted a video about it. It's Unicity74 on YouTube, and I'll put a link to it in there. So if you want to go check out his page and just tell him what a great job that he did there um, putting that together, I appreciate people that are smarter than me creating presets in Mosaic so that I don't have to uh, because writing script is not my strong suit. I am a music guy through and through. Thank you very much for checking out this video. If you would, please like and subscribe uh, on the channel, all the good YouTube stuff. Uh, you can also go to Facebook, uh, so fb.me slash Logan Jacob Music to find some of my electronic music. The other playlists in this channel, if you want to check out some of it, I'm almost done with my 24 Fugues project for the time being. Uh, if you want to check out all of my experiments with Fugue Machine, and I do have a couple of videos explaining how I set that up. Go check that out. Uh, like and subscribe and share it with your friends and all that good stuff. I greatly appreciate everybody tuning in and I hope you enjoy. Thank you.